So what are carbohydrates? Well, when you think about carbohydrates, you probably think about things like bread and pasta. Do you ever think about mushrooms or ladybirds? What about Japanese spider crabs? I sometimes think about these when I think of carbohydrates. In this video, I'll explain to you why and lots of other info. So carbohydrates are one of the four major types of organic compounds. They're made up of carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, and oxygen atoms. And they actually contain twice as many hydrogen atoms as they do oxygen atoms. And that's how they get their name, because two hydrogen atoms to every oxygen atom is like a water molecule, H2O. So we call them hydrated carbons. That's how they get their name, carbohydrates. Two hydrogen atoms for every oxygen atom. Now, there are carbohydrate macromolecules. Let's just revise that a macromolecule or macromolecules are large molecules made up of smaller subunits. Now we call carbohydrate macromolecules polysaccharides. Now it's a weird word, but just take a moment to have a look at it. Polysaccharide is a carbohydrate macromolecule. So here we've got a simple diagram of a polysaccharide here, which would be a big, long, long chain of these smaller subunits. And we call the smaller subunits monosaccharides and disaccharides. Mono meaning one, di meaning two. I've got some examples of each of those to show you. So an example of a monosaccharide, here's that term here, mono meaning one, is this molecule here. This molecule is called glucose. And glucose is a very important source of energy for living things. I'm just using this little picture here to represent energy. Glucose is a critical molecule as a source of energy for living things. Now, the atoms in this glucose molecule are C6H12O6. So we have six carbon atoms 12 hydrogen atoms and six oxygen atoms. And they're represented by the black spheres of the carbons here. Red in this diagram is oxygen and the white ones, which might be fairly hard to see, are the hydrogens. Notice the ratio, 12 hydrogens, six oxygens. That's twice as many hydrogens as there are oxygens. And that's why they're called carbohydrates, as in hydrated carbon compounds. So then the smaller subunits of polysaccharides that are made up of two monosaccharides we call disaccharides, di meaning two. An example of a disaccharide is this compound here. This compound here we call sucrose. Sucrose is made up of one glucose molecule and one fructose molecule. And sucrose is actually simple table sugar, which you use around the house. So that's an example of sucrose, a disaccharide. And so when we put long, long chains of those monosaccharides and disaccharides together, we produce polysaccharides, which are the carbohydrate macromolecules. I've got an example here. This one just keeps on going and going and going. So this is lots and lots of monosaccharides or disaccharides placed together in a chain forming our polysaccharide molecule. So there's a few major types of polysaccharide that perform roles in cells. Those roles are either structural roles or functional roles. Cellulose, the first example I'm gonna to talk to you about, is a polysaccharide that forms a structural role. It's a very strong polysaccharide, and it's found in the plant cell wall. Here I've got some onion cells. The cell wall of these onion cells is made up of cellulose. Cellulose is also the major component in wood. 
So again, cellulose is a structural polysaccharide. Let's have a look at two functional polysaccharides. So the functional polysaccharides that I'm gonna tell you about are involved in energy storage. That's why I've got this shipping container here. Here's our energy. The functional polysaccharides are responsible for storing that energy. And the two types of energy storing polysaccharides are starch and glycogen. Starch is the energy storage polysaccharide in plants and glycogen is the energy storage polysaccharide in animals. Now, the way I always tell my students to remember this is using potatoes. Potatoes are starchy. A lot of people know that. You think of potatoes, you think of starch, and you put the two of them together. Well, potatoes are, of course, plants. So there's your way to remember that starch is the energy storage polysaccharide in plants. Glycogen, therefore, is the energy storage polysaccharide in animals. Now, remember I told you glucose is a critical molecule as a source of energy for living things. Well, starch and glycogen, big polysaccharide carbohydrate macromolecules that are made up of glucose molecules. And animals are able to break down either starch or glycogen to release the glucose monosaccharides and use them as a source of energy. The interesting thing is that cellulose, the structural polysaccharide that makes up the cell wall and is also a main component in wood, animals are not able to break down cellulose, even though it's made up of glucose monosaccharides. It's because the glucose monosaccharides have been joined differently to form the cellulose polysaccharide. So that's, I guess, why we don't eat wood because we don't have the digestive enzymes that can break it down and release glucose. We do for starch and glycogen, but not for cellulose. So I'm just gonna put it out there. You're probably wondering why I brought in a mushroom and a ladybird and a Japanese spider crab. Well, that's because I'm gonna to talk to you about one more polysaccharide. There's one more and it's called chitin. Now, chitin, remember that carbohydrates are made up of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. Well, chitin is a bit of a special case. It's not really a carbohydrate because it actually also contains nitrogen, a different type of atom. But the thing is biologists class chitin as a polysaccharide because it's very similar to cellulose. So what role does chitin play? Well, it's found in the cell wall of some fungi, and it also is the major component in the exoskeletons of arthropods. And these two guys here are examples of arthropods. Arthropods are animals that have that shell on their exterior, like a ladybird, or a Japanese spider crab. They're just two of my favorite examples. This is Henry the ladybird that once landed on me on a beach, which was a bit weird. And this Japanese spider crab, I actually saw in an aquarium in Osaka when I was a little kid. It was the scariest thing ever. It was almost taller than me and I'll never forget it. But there are lots of different types of arthropods and the exoskeletons of arthropods are made of chitin so I haven't lost my mind. I'm bringing up these examples because chitin makes up the cell wall of some fungi and it also makes the exoskeleton of arthropods. So that's it for our major carbohydrate macromolecules or polysaccharides. There were four of them and we can break them down into their roles as either playing structural roles or functional roles. So, our structural polysaccharides are cellulose and chitin. Cellulose is the major component of the plant cell wall. Chitin is a component of the cell wall of some fungi and also the major component of the exoskeleton of arthropods. And the functional polysaccharides are starch 
and glycogen. Their energy storage polysaccharides, starch is the energy storage polysaccharide for plants and glycogen is the energy storage polysaccharide for animals. So I hope this gives you a pretty clear understanding about carbohydrates. It's been a pleasure and I'll see you next time.